Hey everyone, hey. thanks for coming. Thanks Meredith for being here. Thanks for having me. Let's just jump right in. Tell everyone what, who doesn't know what Digitors is. Okay, so you kind of got a sense from the video, but we are the largest producer of live events featuring social media stars. So we'll do 200,000 tickets this year, up from 100,000 last year. And we create concerts and festivals for teens around the world. And how did you get here? What was the journey like? Well, um, I started in the music business, and um, I was managing an artist, so on the traditional side, and it was right at that moment when social media was taking over the world, yet the traditional folks were like, I don't, I want to pretend it's not happening. And so um, after they spent the entire promo budget, the president sat me down and said, okay, now we need social media. And I was just like, ugh. Um, okay, um, so that was sort of where my light bulb went off because I realized what was going on. I sort of rolled my sleeves up, jumped into the YouTube community specifically right off the bat, and got to know all these creators and realized they had what everyone else wants, which was audience. So we wanted to fish where the fish were, and there was this opportunity to create an in real life experience, which as the internet takes over our lives, there's sort of an increased need to connect. So that's the short version of the story. And what is it about these internet, these teens, these teen internet celebrities that intrigues you so much? I think it's the connection they have to this audience. Um, it blows my mind, and I think it blows everybody's mind that goes to an event to see firsthand um, how powerful it is. The girls are crying, they're hysterical. They don't just um, like these stars, they admire them on a level where they're sort of evangelizing them. Um, so it, I've kind of thought long and hard about this, and I think it has everything to do with the fact that they're relatable, they're talking about things that are important to this demo, and it's extremely authentic. So they're like the coolest friends in the world with like 10 million followers, 10, 10 million friends, and, and they're you know impacting lives. So when you see these girls like hugging and crying these stars, so you think that these, their fans, these, these internet stars are celebrities. You think the relationship between these celebrities and their fans is different than that of like a Taylor Swift or Selena Gomez? Do you think it's more intimate? And if so, why? So I think absolutely more than some traditional stars. There are some traditional stars like Ariana Grande and Taylor Swift for that matter that really interact with their fans as much as they can. But still there's less of an expectation that a star like that will ever tweet you back. And because of that, you know, you sort of think of that that sort of category of star as more on a pedestal, sort of out of reach. Um, you can look at them in a magazine or, you know, hear them on the radio, but it's not like a two-way conversation. Um, for these social influencers, it is. And they're engaging every day with, you know, tons of their audience. And so their audience feels much closer to them. And do you think that's because they're just regular kids who happen to, like, be really good at Vine? Yeah, I think that they, that, that word relatable is so important because right. they see themselves in these stars. So the, the sort of level of support, the level of excitement is that much more elevated because it's like they're rooting for their friend. Yeah, and I feel like the social community has created a space where like it's cool to tweet back at your fans, whereas in like the real serious music scene, it's not cool. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. It's like if you're like super famous celebrity, it's like you want to be aloof. Yeah. At least that was sort of like the thing to do, I guess. <laughs> um, but what I notice, um, specifically with like Nash Greer, who many of you guys may know, he's our creative director at Digi. Oh. He doesn't come into the office and like work <laughs> at a, like a cubicle, but he, um, he produces content for us and he's like exclusive to us for all live stuff. Um, 
And actually, I pick his brain all the time because he knows better than anyone. Totally. So he has, across his platforms, 30 million fans. Crazy. And so, yeah. And, and I ask him, like, how do you connect with all of those people? Because, you know, that's sort of the same kind of numbers that a Taylor Swift has, right? Totally. So how do you make them feel connected to you? Because certainly you can't tweet back 30 million people a day. Um, and, and what he does is he spends time doing tweet sprees or follow sprees, and he carves out a chunk of his day to reply to, to tweets or to comments. And that percentage of fans that he calls out make all the other fans realize that he's within reach. And so he can only do a very small percentage, but he does it in a meaningful way that makes everyone feel like he's accessible. Okay, so let's say there's a big Viner that you want to bring on tour. What is your process for like seeking out and do you sign them? Like what's the process like, if you can tell? Yeah, um, so we've been in doing this for the last four and a half years. So when we got started, we were really early. We were we were the first to do this. We're still pretty much the main people that do this. Um, but we made really important, meaningful relationships with all the top creators. And a lot of the other creators kind of come up with colla from collaborating with the top people. So it's this sort of... A mentor. Yeah. And they, a lot of the top creators put on the sort of emerging creators, and they're all connected. Um, so because of our relationships, we always kind of knew ahead of time who was about to pop and it's still true to this day that we have this sort of like six month advantage over others because we we know what's going on um, and so as a result we're really interested in the emerging talent because it's like this self-replenishing pool you know right. the people that we booked two three years ago probably wouldn't be booked today they're either they aged out they're doing other things you know the younger teen audience wants somebody new. Um, and so what we do is we book like 60 people for our festivals. We're focused really heavily on uh, engagement metrics. So we're not saying who's the top subscribed, who's the most followed. It's uh, almost irrelevant. It's like how many people that are subscribed to you are active. And that's the thing that we're hyper-focused on is how, what's the conversation you're generating? Do you have... Um, like how many comments, how many retweets, how many favorites. To us, that's so much more powerful. Um, and we've actually worked with certain talent who were in the hundreds of thousands of subscribers, but they were selling 5,000 tickets, you know, and they were doing stuff where it's kind of like, you wouldn't expect that. Um, so that's what our focus is. We find them, we sign them, and we become their touring partner. So effectively, like, live nation for this for this for the teens. generation, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it's my understanding that not only like singers and dancers are people, are like talent that you sign, you also sign like a, like a Marcus John, mm -hmm. who's like a, a comedian, he just makes funny videos. So what do they perform when they're on tour? Um, so I love this question, people always ask this. Um, and we have developed a creative process where because we're working with more Viners and more vloggers and what you would sort of categorically call, I guess, personalities, um, they ask, the talent says, what are we going to do? The audience says, what are, we, what are they going to do? And so we created a writer's room. We bring in comedic writers from UCB and Groundlings. We create sketches and skits. We try to extract the things that resonated with their audience on their sort of platform of choice and how do we um, elongate it because obviously if it was Vine it was six seconds um, and really bring to life some of what their audience reacted to in such a positive way on Vine, YouTube, Snapchat, whatever. Um, and so we're actually producing segments, interactive games, everything from live fan fiction, the PG-13 version <laughs> to, um, you know, it, speed dating games to just like an SNL type skit. And do you ever find that translating from video to like IRL in real life, <laughs> it, do you find that that's difficult to do? Are some people better at it than others? Does it depend on the person? I think because our audience is pretty much happy with, like we could just have them go on stage and wave and everyone would be like, oh, I can't take it. I, like, they're happy. They, they don't really, um, the bar isn't set too high. Not to say that we don't set our own bar high because we want to produce something of quality. But, you know, it's already 
bringing these people to the stage that the audience is happy, and then we try to really push them to produce out great segments. So to answer your question specifically, some people are have more sort of acting skills mm -hmm. or improv skills, or they're a little more um, comedic, they have good timing, and some others are extremely cute and, you know, they're willing to, to do stuff, but maybe they're not, uh, you know, going to... Uh, to join the cast of SNL anytime soon. <laughs> so we kind of modify it based on who we're working with. But you guys take like a very hands-on approach with each person individually. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's great. So your co-founder is your husband, right? Yes. Can you tell me how you guys got started together? And do you like working together? Do you not like working together? <laughs> Um, yes, so we got started together when we were both working in the music business. He's a record producer, and I was doing A&R, so we connected on a project, and from our first date, we were coming up with ideas on how we could start businesses together. <laughs> <laughs> so we nerded out, and one of the businesses we started actually worked, Digitour. <laughs> And um, it's great. I mean, there are certainly challenges. We just moved offices, and we in our old office, we were sharing a, an office. Um, and so now that we have our own spaces, I think that's a good thing. Um, but, you know, if we didn't work together, we would never see each other, and we get to have lots of dates on airplanes. And you guys are very lucky. Yeah, just kind of balance all the work and play. But we love what we do, so it works out well. That's great. And when you guys got started, you were primarily focused on YouTube, right? Because that was the yes, media of the Yes, because Vine moment. didn't exist yet. Right, and now <laughs> Vine has kind of taken that place. Do you see another platform rising as, like, the number one place to find talent? Um, yeah, so we, it's still very much Vine of the moment, and mm -hmm. YouTube is still absolutely important. Right. So I would say initially it was 100% YouTube source talent. Now it's about, I would say, 60% Vine, 40% YouTube or we'd leave a little space for other stuff. So the platform that we've been starting to book talent from is a platform called You Now. Oh, yeah. And um, it's really interesting because I think that platform is a great example of, like, engagement metrics um, because a lot of the talent who consider themselves You Nowers, and for those who don't know what You Now is, it's a, it's a live streaming platform. And so... Um, and it's very teen-based, right? Very teen-based, yeah. And so, you know, a lot of their other socials, some of these you nowers are, I don't know, like 25,000 followers, 75,000. So it's like tiny numbers compared to the people Everyone we else. usually work with. But then when they go on you now, the, the number of people who actually will tune in and, and interact with them, I mean, these guys are driving trending topics on Twitter, and they're, they're really um, connecting with, Maybe what looks like a smaller audience, but to, again, it doesn't really matter because if you have 75,000 active fans and that's the total number of followers you have versus a million and you have 75,000 active, who cares, right? Because right. the real number then is 75,000. And can you explain to everyone here, including me, <laughs> what you mean by when you say that Digitors is platform agnostic? Yes, so I think it's so key to not um, just be co completely YouTube focused, completely Vine focused, even Instagram focused, um, because you're fine. You have to fish where the fish are, and for us, our whole mission is to listen to our audience um, and to figure out what they want, what's motivating them, what's exciting them, and being a curator who's bringing it all together. And so yesterday they were on YouTube, today they're on Vine, tomorrow they're on You Now or Snapchat, or a platform that we haven't even heard of yet. So being nimble and being sort of able to go wherever they go is really important for our sort of long-term plan. Right. And so you, didn't, you wouldn't necessarily care about what platform someone is big on just as long as the audience is there. Correct. Okay, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> so going off of that, how do you guys constantly keep up with the always changing social space? There's always a new platform. There's always a new star. Like how would, how, how do you guys even keep up? Um, so we have an amazing team who's really focused and Chris and I, my co-founder, we are also extremely obsessed with everything to do with this space. So it consumes us, and we listen to our own audience, which is pretty large um, and extremely vocal. 
like the, I honestly say I'm not really the CEO. The, these 13 year old girls are. <laughs> I just I have to do things for them, and they're like, "Why is it like this?" And I'm like, "Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it." Um, but you know that we it's all about being a good listener and it's all about understanding the behaviors of this generation because they're so radically different than teenagers 10 years ago or 20 years ago, even five years ago. And so being sort of obsessed with them and finding um, as many opportunities to talk to them, ask them questions and understand sort of why they're doing the things they're doing has helped us make really educated decisions about how we program our events and ultimately everything else that we do as a company. So what is technically your target audience? Because I think I'm actually even too old to be in your target audience, even though I know everything that you're talking about. I know. Um, well, 13 to 18 year old females. So you're like pretty close. Yeah, I'm almost there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but our performers are a little older. And since you're an Instagram right. star, maybe we have to talk about booking you for one of our events. Sure. sure. We'll talk. I'll have my people. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, one last question because we're going to throw it to the audience. Yeah. What is, and I'm sure you can speak to this, the absolute most absurd like fan experience you've ever seen? Oh my God. Because um, I'm sure you've seen the craziest. Like, yeah, with the fans just absolutely freaking out. Right. So, I mean, we've had everything from fan. I was, uh, so on a tour bus down, we were passing through South By, and um, the talent were like getting lunch, and I just did a sweep of the bus and there was a fan hiding in one of the talent's bunks. <laughs> who The talent didn't put them in the bunk. They just, like, right. found their way onto the bus. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, but, like, you have to go. Oh um, gave her a T-shirt for the road. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there was another artist who was hiding under the stage at one of our uh, concerts. And, um, I mean, it's insane. Like, we were in London about a year ago, and there were, um, I would say like 500 girls found our hotel, and we're really good with security. We never tell anybody where we are, mm -hmm. and they always find out. They, you know, they say if fangirls were private investigators, there would be no <laughs> unsolved mysteries. <laughs> um, there are 500 girls in the lobby, and they all are like literally sleeping in the lobby, and I say to the guy, I'm like, look, I love them. They make me have like they allow me to have a business but like this is really crazy can right. you do something about this and they're like uh they all bought hotel rooms <gasps> and I was like <laughs> I was like are you you must oh be joking God. so yeah so they had every right to sit in the lobby totally of, and and so it was great business like, for the hotel it's totally nuts but um yeah that's, that's sort of like normal believe it or not. And then I have one more question. Actually, okay. this is going to be the last one because I saw that you guys have on some of your tours Alex from Target and I have to know, what is he doing there? <laughs> is he just like doing it like an appearance? Um, so, okay, what we love to do is obviously like we book some people in advance, but there always has to be like this little pocket for like <clears throat> the Alex from Targets of the right. world who just like know. one day they're bagging groceries at Target, or not groceries, <laughs> like your stuff from Target, and the next day they're a bona fide social star. He had 800,000 followers overnight. Oh my God. I am so fascinated by this. And so I had to have him. So he came out to the event. He quit his job at, at Target. A I big know. loss for Target. But he's hilarious. So I made him do a fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> um, being himself, being Alex from Target. And the girls just went out of their I'm minds. Sure. Um, and he was adorable. Like we plugged him into some of like our interactive games mm -hmm. and the Q&A. And so it was more of like an appearance. And, a, and he did the meet and greet. But... Um, he he's adorable. That's he's awesome. really cute. Okay, we're gonna throw it to the audience for some questions. It's, we have a mic running to your left. If anyone has any questions, I think there's over here, oh, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? Um, I was wondering. You said that um, your target audience is 13 to 18 year old girls and some of your past artists have aged out. Would you say that there's an age limit or a, a expiration for a talent? So for the talent, I'd say we see about 30% churn rate per year. And you know, some of the talent, they go on to do other things and they sort of grow with their audience and their audience, we purposely stay young. So there are certain artists who 
will go and sort of appeal to 20-somethings and some artists who ultimately kind of leave social media and go get jobs and do other things. Um, as for our audience, I always say, like, when they hit 18, they go to college and get real boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> instead of their internet boyfriends. Because it's effectively like the boy band of today, right? The internet star. And um, there's a lot of excitement around them when they're in that sort of high school, even a little middle school. I also but feel like people only have that kind of time to like surf the internet when they're in high school and middle school. They spend seven hours a day on their phone, consuming media from social feeds. Crazy. So, I mean, that's a big chunk of your day, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, over there? Hi. Hi. Have you found that a lot of artists or comedians that didn't um, grow on social that, you know, came up the traditional ways want to participate in uh, DigiFest or the Digi Tours because of this huge audience that you guys have cultivated and they want to tap into that? And do you allow them to? Great question. Um, yes, yeah, so we have had, it, it's actually kind of full, full circle. You know, um, we got started, people thought we were absolutely out of our minds. They're like, this makes no sense. And now, a couple years in, we've really established a brand and we do really big events. We just did um, almost 20,000 people yeah. on June 6th at City Field. Um, but we had Demi Lovato there, Ooh. and she's she rocks. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and she gets it because she's actually very active on mm -hmm. social, and she is launching products. She has a skincare line, and she was like, "This is an awesome opportunity to promote my skincare line." So, for someone that's traditional like a Demi, thinking about what we've created in terms of a live platform featuring massive social stars. She is getting a benefit out of that. And I think that that to us is really cool because it's really sort of appealing to not just our audience directly, but, you know, all sorts of individuals, including the famous celebrities. Um, and then there's there's been a lot of, um, it's funny, there, there's a lot of, like, older comedians who do videos with social stars. Um, a lot of the talent we work with, I'll see everything from, like, oh, my gosh, like Hulk Hogan did something, and then, it, well, he's not a comedian. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know what I'm talking about sometimes. Um, but there's just, like, an interesting sort of array of, like, I guess a traditional, a more traditional sort of celebrity, um, different versions of that, who will want to kind of plug in because they think it's a great idea to build their digital business, which it is, but some of those videos are really ridiculous. <laughs> and do you find that these young teens, is their goal to, like, eventually get to a traditional record label or are they happy being independent like is that what is their goal is it to like kind of eventually fade out of the teen thing and go on to a mainstream sort of career or this is what they want to be doing I think it's completely individual so guys like Jack and Jack who you guys might know they're huge vine stars we did a tour with them last year they, they were here and it was madness. yes amazing I love them and they they're they work with us all the time um they they have like two they have a number one EP right now on iTunes and all my like traditional music friends from when I was at the labels are always like can I get a meeting and you know their sort of position they might have changed their mind now but was they didn't really need a label um, and they could you know they're doing all of this on their own they have distribution they don't need to have like physical right. albums produced whereas like a Sean Mendes he's signed to a label right yeah. Exactly. So, okay. I mean, you can go either way, but then there's also some talent that I talk to and they're like, actually, they're, okay, so there's these two 15-year-olds who I adore, the Dolan twins. Okay. They're so cute. And I was, I had dinner with them on Friday <laughs> and I was asking them, I'm like, so, um, like, what, it, what is, like, you have a magic wand, like, what is your career look like in a year? Because I can't even say five years, because five years, like, is an eternity, know, right, yeah. for them. So I'm like, in 12 months or in two years, like, what is, like, the ultimate? And they thought about it, and I, they're like, well, we used to th think we wanted to do TV and movies, but, um, but like, no one really watches those anymore. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do what we're doing right now and do more digital content. And I'm like, you know what? I think you're right, and he's exactly the audience of our fans. So I kind of think that um, there's a lot to do. It's not just short form video; it's long form video. There's a whole. There's so many ways to monetize content and um, and to really build a business through the internet. And so these artists are doing that, and I'm so inspired by them. Okay, um, we have a question. Oh, right in front. Hi, um, I have a teenage daughter, and. Um 
wanted to know, do you have any like programs for the teenage girls and to give you ideas or feedbacks? Yeah. Focus group. So we are constantly talking to, so we've identified what we call our super fans and we usually um, do focus groups with them. But we're constantly sort of opening that up as wide as possible because as I said, like we need to ask actual teen girls what they want. Um, so there's no established programs, but talk to me after. I'd love to <laughs> talk to your daughter. And um, we do have some things that could be interesting, but yeah. Okay, so that's all the time we have. Thank you cool. so much. This Thank is you. very informative. Where can everyone buy tickets for upcoming events? Thedigitor.com. Digitor.com. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks, everyone, and thanks.